This is the sixth year that we've been running this. And uh, so thank you for, for coming along uh, because every year the success of it depends on the participants that you're going you're gonna to see here for the rest of the day. And also the audience uh, interaction. We put this on so that you can get something from it. And throughout the day we'll make a deal of how we're sort of modelling what you might want to think about yourselves should you ever go do a presentation. And it needs to be to people who aren't specialists in your subject. So keep an eye out for what these people do and see if there's anything that you could steal from them in the way they do that. Before I hand over to our, our uh, VIP speaker to open the day, <laughs> I think maybe heard the sigh at the other end of the room because she doesn't like being introduced that way. Um, so, uh, and the introductions, I suppose. I'm Dr. Scott Ramsey. I work in Leeds, which is the Learning Enhancement and Academic Development Service. And this is my colleague, Andrew, who doesn't have a mic on. Yes, <laughs> but who also works in Leeds. <laughs> and, uh, and we have Maxine over at the side. So the three of us are the team who've been putting this together, along with the help of our colleagues down at the front. So we'll be up on the stage all day. Over at the side there on the screen, you'll see that we've got uh, a big projection that says join at slido.com with the hashtag LTAX20. One of the nice things about coming to a conference is that you get to take part as an audience member. So you'll have a chance to ask questions of the people after they finish doing their, their 10 minute slots. There'll be five for questions for everyone. And so if you want to ask a question straight out, you know, out loud, we have a, a microphone that I'll do the demo. I'll do, on me. I'll do the demo just now. It's, it's, a, it's one that we're going to throw into the audience, but you can bounce it off your head and it, it really doesn't hurt. So even if you're not looking, I promise you won't go home injured. And we will have a chance for you to ask questions anonymously, though, if you prefer not to be speaking on the mic, just by through, going through this system. So as it says, slido.com, our event code is LTAX20, and we'll make sure the speaker gets to, to hear those questions and gets a chance to answer them. I think that's everything that we need to see right now. We are uh, live tweeting this, as happens with academic conferences. So if you follow the same hashtag, uh, and we also have stickers for your Instagram stories for Let's Talk About X. So if you search for that same code everywhere, you'll get all of our stuff. Apart from that, I'm just going to hand over to Professor Moira Fishbacker-Smith, who's the Vice Principal for Learning and Teaching, and who we regularly draft into <laughs> open events like this for us. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as Scott said, my name is Moria Fishbacker-Smith. I'm the Vice Principal for Learning and Teaching, and I have two tasks today, the first of which is to welcome you to Let's Talk About X 2020. If you have never been to a Let's Talk About X conference before, then let me tell you, you are in for a treat. I can still remember the talks I listened to last year and how impressed I was with the range of talks, the way in which students were able to communicate their research, and actually how early they were in their studies on many occasions. So you really, I'm sure you're really going to enjoy the next couple of days. Um, I'd also like to extend a particular welcome to those of you who are members of the public and not normally in this room listening to the sorts of things that we do here at the university. And I think there are some family members here are coming later in the day, so I hope you enjoy um, watching your family present. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the origins of this conference, but let's talk about X started a few years ago with um, £50 and the harebrained idea of Scott and Andrew, who in two weeks turned it into a conference. And well, what have they started? Because it's grown and grown and it's a fantastic innovation and it's exactly the sort of thing that I think uh, we hugely value here at the university and I hope we'll see grow and grow in the future. So um, as always, thank you to you too and I'll, I'll come back to that at the end. Um, my other task is just to share a few thoughts that, that relate to the day or to the days ahead. So I thought I would begin by saying something about research, which as VP Learning and Teaching isn't what I generally talk about, but it's important to the theme of the day. So a number of you will have seen this slide before. It's one of the slides that we have in our standard deck and it matters to us because it says a lot in one slide about the research heritage of the university. Uh, not just that we're very old, but that actually the research that's undertaken here is internationally recognised. Um, we're part of the Russell Group, which is the 24 research intensive institutions in the United Kingdom. And globally, we, we're ranked really well as an institution. And that, that's great and that's important to us. But why does it matter to you? Well, from an education point of view, I think one of the things that's really special about working in a university like this is the fact that we can involve our students from first year right the way through to their PhD studies in the research that we do here. And not just in terms of hearing about what staff do and learning more about their research, but actually doing your own work. And really that's what Let's Talk About X is all about. 
Research intensive universities offer you the chance to be exposed to all kinds of opportunities for research and that's really important. You get to see everything from how you create research ideas through to where things fail and failure is important. Not everything works the first time and actually the research environment is a brilliant opportunity to learn that. Um, alternative approaches, problem solving, discovery, exploration and sharing insights and so forth. So actually that's a really important part of undergraduate and postgraduate teaching. But not just here, I also wanted to mention um, Universitas 21. So the university is part of a broader network of not 21, but I think it's now 27 universities across the world who work together and who collaborate because we all come from a similar cultural perspective, historical perspective, and we all value research and education. What does that mean for you internationally? Well, Universitas 21 has just launched something called RISE, which is one of its latest challenges. And it's an opportunity for students to do projects that link to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And I'm not saying that to advertise this particular scheme, but more to show you that what you're doing here is amazing, but actually there are other things, other opportunities that you can engage in beyond the university as you think through how you want to develop your own research. And so I would encourage you to look around and, and think a little bit more about some of those other opportunities. And just to give you an example, Here's a couple of the projects that won prizes from the RISE competition this year. Um, one connected in university students in America with projects um, that were across a range of countries in Africa, Uganda, Liberia. And another one was to support people who have difficulties with fine motor skills and to enable them to, to do things they couldn't otherwise do. So just an example of the sorts of um, really impactful projects that are going on um, amongst your peer institutions and that you might want to get a little bit more involved in. So I mention all of these because I think there's a wider context that um, something like Let's Talk About X really helps to prepare you for. So I think every one of you here that's going to talk about your research and, and many others who you work with have a fantastic opportunity to make a massive impact on society. Um, but there are some things that I think are really challenging for us and for you. And one of them is this. We live in a society that actually a lot of what we're doing is challenged on a very regular basis. And it's not very long ago that Britain apparently had enough of experts. So you're here learning your expertise and your discipline. But actually communicating that discipline is going to be challenged. And uh, you may have seen this on Twitter around about quite a lot. You know, people can very confidently assert different opinions based on emotion, based on all kinds of things. And actually, part of the skill that we are trying to help you hone here is how you articulate the value of science in that kind of environment. And I thought it might be interesting to share something. Now, this is from 2005, so I am not saying that this is necessarily still a reflection. But a paper from Bernard Choi and colleagues in the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health set out two quite different views about how people see science. So on the left hand side, it's, it's, as I say, it's a bit dated now, but you know, it puts scientists out there as people who are looking to advance science, who communicate through publications, uh, talk to their patients, there's professorships, you publish, you, you disseminate your knowledge at conferences like this. Um, we have a speciality which is, is actually being quite carefully scrutinising other people's work and always trying to improve um, our knowledge of a topic. Typically concerned with broader issues, I think this is changing. I think a lot of scientists really care hugely about the big policy picture, but, but this reflects something in 2005 and before. We have a very specialist language. Now, each of you will present in your own disciplines and you'll have your own terminology that you'll have to think quite carefully about your audience who come from a different perspective. And time. We need time to do research. We need time for research to build a body of knowledge that actually can then have an impact and be relied upon. Whereas policymakers, who we're often trying to influence, have much shorter time scales, are often concerned with handling crises. They don't have time to go back to the original science and may not have a scientific background. They're looking at a range of issues that apply to a range of problems, and they're often having to use quite quite codified language again. So they're talking about to political, they're talking to their peers about political agendas and they're using terminology that's quite political in nature. And, and they just don't have time. So they're looking at, you know, what's, what are the messages I can get instantly? Now, 
in the middle of all of this is the big issue of communication. And I think here is what you have a fantastic opportunity for, is to develop those communication skills. How do you take different communities, whether it's scientists and policy makers or staff and managers, it's really all about how we communicate the robustness, the validity, and the underpinning principles of what it is that we are doing and the argument that we are trying to make. And that, I think, is, is a, here's an opportunity for you to demonstrate that and to continue to build those skills. And so I thought I'd just, as I finish, because I only have 10 minutes, just link this back to something called the Glasgow um, Graduate Attributes Matrix. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this um, matrix, but if you look down the left, and I haven't managed to capture them all on the slide at the size that you could read, there are a couple of others. But these are attributes that after lots of consultation with employers, we recognise were the kinds of attributes that we want all our graduates to be able to demonstrate. And if you look at what's on the academic dimension, and there's also other sections that are personal and transferable skills that you can look up later on. If you look down that list, pretty much every one of you will have had to have thought very carefully about the principles and methods and the limitations of your discipline. The fact that you're here shows that you're intellect intellectually curious and you're trying to pursue new knowledge and understanding. That you've identified and defined a complex issue and you've researched it in a researchable form. I won't go through them all, but if you think about what you're doing, actually you're demonstrating a number of these graduate attributes just by virtue of the work that you've done here. So I really wanted to make that link clear because I think what we're trying to do here is to support you, not just to develop those graduate skills, but to be really effective in, in demonstrating them and using them when you, when you leave the university. So that was the main thing I really wanted to say. I wanted to say, to, to demonstrate that, to say why I think an initiative like Let's Talk About X is actually so valuable and so important. And I really hope that you'll encourage your peers to come along um, again in the future, because it's not just about the impact that the university staff research has, it's about the impact that your research also has. And once, you've, once your day is done and your talk is done and you can think about something else, go back and have a look at this framework and think, how can I develop my CV and my profile to show that these are the sorts of skills I've developed? So that was really all I wanted to say. I hope that that helps to make a little bit of a connection to some wider context for today. And so really all that remains for me to do is to say thank you very much again to everybody who imagined Let's Talk About X and for putting this on for the next two days. Thank you to those of you who are here who are engaging with this and I know there are others who are coming later. Um, I hope we can continue to build on this year on year, but I think you'll have a fantastic two days. So. Um, I hope that you enjoy. Let's talk about X. Thanks very much.